New York. Eight million people. Fire two more risottos, that's four all day. Everything we do is on a mega, mega level. It's a four hour way. Is it really? All I want to do is just win, win. 24,000 restaurants. I'm not going to close the restaurant. Hell to the now. You're losing money by the money minute. By minute. My family legacy is on the line here. A million dollars is bull. Right. It really is. Three businesses at a crossroads. Our goals are the same. We both want to be rich. Fighting for their piece of a $34 billion industry. You've got to bulldoze your way into this is crazy. This record's my life. It's gonna work no matter what. A budding empire. We've grown a $45 million business. The meatball shop is a proven, successful concept. We need $4 million to open restaurants. Either we gotta get off the pot, man. A fading mom and pop. My great-grandfather started this place in 1927. The numbers are way down this year. Go to f outside. You might better go home. We need more customers. A neighborhood joint with national ambitions. I want to branch out into merchandising. The price of doing everything on my own is that I'm the only one to blame. Kill me. In this world, you either eat or get eaten. Either you're with me or you're against me. You will really want me to say that on camera? I want the truth. Consumed. I need plates. I can't put out food because I don't have plates. I got every goddamn chef in the restaurant and I can't get a Dishwashed? The food is taking way too long, and actually people are complaining. You taking your time to let me know is actually going to help me to slow down, but thank you. In 2009, my childhood friend Michael Chernow and I launched the meatball shop. Michael and I have been friends for over 20 years. We had our first fist fight in high school. We both got suspended for it. We see things completely differently. You it's think that you have to work harder I, for I do have to work harder for Well, that's not true. We fight about everything, and the fights are what makes the meatball shop the success it is today. Michael brings this cool factor. What's up, Michael? What's up, Johnny? I knew that if I went into business with Michael, the restaurant would be packed from day one. Pull it all out, fix it all. We got 10 minutes, let's get through that and make it happen. Daniel Holzman is the kind of guy you want to get caught in a foxhole with. More butter, more salt. Salt and butter. He's not going to tell you how awesome you are. Those are not good. But when it comes to getting done, he will get done. I love building a restaurant. We wanted to have a very popular, successful restaurant, so we needed to do something that was unique and new. And meatballs are something that every single culture and every human being can identify with. They're delicious, they're inexpensive. Let's give them the best for as little as possible. Awesome service, great atmosphere, and a really delicious meal using high-quality ingredients for nothing. There was no meatball-centric restaurant, and the trick was to find a neighborhood that's right on the verge of happening. That's it. Like that formula works. Dude, you guys are awesome, by the way. Oh, thank, thank you, me. man. Thanks so much. Place. Daniel and I put our life savings, everything on the line. We literally built the meatball shop with our bare hands. <laughs> Open for business? Open for business. He ran the front of the house. This is our opportunity to make perfect. Like, let's just get the table settings done right. And I ran the back of the house. Three roast veg, three daily greens. The success of the first meatball shop was immediate. We had cookbooks in the works, and we were in the New York Times, we were on television. It was like, you know, never, never land. When we opened the first shop, we projected a $20 check average. We're gonna do $2 million in sales. It turned out we did twice that. $4 million a year in sales, 600 people a day. Unbelievable. We took every single penny and put it back in the business. Five years later, we have six restaurants and a commissary, plus the office, and over 350 people working for us. And projected sales for 2015 are $22.5 million. The American Dream. We've developed an amazing team to help us as we grow into a nationally recognized restaurant group. That's what I'm saying! There's no reason that every major city and large town can't have a meatball shop. It's like a hamburger place. We have six restaurants in five years, and we've accomplished a lot. Even if Michael and I don't agree on how to run the business, we definitely agree that we want to grow the business. Six restaurants is massive. From the meatball shop's perspective, that's just getting started. Right now, the meatball shop is at a crossroads. You know, we have a choice. We can either continue to grow as a homegrown concept slowly one shop at a time or we can take investor money from the outside and grow exponentially definitely want to open a shop this year that is our goal not only will investor money help us to expand faster but we'll be able to take some money off the table thus far everything has gone right back into the business i'd like to have a thousand restaurants i'm never going to be satisfied i'm so hungry all i want to do is just win win i just want to win Perfect. Salud, everyone.
It's always a pleasure. Anatoni's is a family-owned restaurant that's been around for five generations. My brother, my mother, and I run the business. It's a traditional Italian restaurant, and basically it's been the same since I was a little kid. What are you doing? What are you doing? Pretending to work? My grandparents came from Italy in 1927, and they bought this uh, property. Chicken cacciatore. And they turned it into a restaurant so they can always eat, they said. You'll never go hungry. Whatever you want, throw it my way. I'm ready. Stepping in here is like stepping into a time capsule. Four generations passed through my great-grandfather, grandfather to my father, Ralph, and then down to my brother and I, Anthony. I've worked here since I'm 11. I've worked in this restaurant. Never did anything else. It's the only job I've ever had in my entire life. And I remember being eight years old, going downstairs in the basement and tapping kegs of beer. I couldn't even move it. I'd pull it. They'd be yelling and screaming at me, too. Hurry up! It's busy. What are you doing? All right, you got to take one of these up. Take All one. Right. You got it? You can hold it. I'm in the back making the food most of the time. Oh, Chicken parmesan. Really good, right? So it's delicious. <laughs> my brother does more of the getting the people to come through the front door and try to make sure they have a good experience. I call my ladies here. <laughs> my lovely ladies. When it comes to business, my brother has his head in the sand and way up his ass. Put up a picture. Uh, no, please. I can't put a picture on Jesus Instagram Christ, page. Jesus Christ, you're wrong, and that's it, period. Yeah, this is the way business is done. This is how it works. Ralph, he's a pandy ass. All uh, right, listen, the guy wants the food. Turn his TV off. Turn it off. Even though Ralph and Anthony run the restaurant, they still report to me every Night. Oh, shut up. Anthony! I always worry about what my mother thinks. I didn't know you were here. She's the owner. Me and my brother listen to her. Which means there's nobody here. Well, we gotta get ready for the day. I mean, you know. The Bronx has changed. There only used to be four restaurants here. That was it. Now there's maybe, I don't know how many. You know, I'm here 50 years, and I've seen ups and I've seen downs. My husband and I ran this restaurant until the day he died. My father, he, he, he was here every day of his life. We worked together. It's not like a regular uh, father and son relationship. I really want to cry when I see daddy's pictures, but my children, I don't want them to see that I get upset. Every day, I miss my father. It hurts, though, 10 years later. It's okay to cry for. Okay. That sign outside, it says five generations. My children don't work here yet, but they want to work here. I would love my kids to see what I saw. The only thing is I don't know if it could happen anymore. That's the problem. Pull up on top. Good job. It usually gross around $600,000 for the year. This year has been a tough year. Our sales are down 20%. That's a lot for a small little family business like this. Does that scare you? Always. It's always very scary. And Tony's is not making enough money to sustain three separate families. That's it. I don't like change a lot. I like everything to stay the way it is. But things aren't the same. I don't know if it could ever get back to that. I wish it would. So what's going on? So how do we do? A little more than 2400 for the day on Saturday. About 29% for the day down from last year. Look, you got to start listening to my ideas, man. We got to start doing these things. It just, just, it just ain't going to work, most of them. You want my list of ideas? I'll give you a little bit. One, we need a new video on our website. Another one, what about the idea I had for the Taco Tuesday? My brother does have a lot of things he wants to do in the restaurant, but I'm doing this for almost 40 years of my life. I'm not saying I know everything, that's for sure, but I know when something is not going to work. Come up with a good idea from now on, I'll listen, but until you come up with a good one, nothing to listen about. in 2004 is something that I've always wanted to do. I really wanted to make people happy through food. Yum! I know! This looks good. My mom wanted me to get a job in the post office. That's what I grew up hearing. That was so not me. I did not want to grow up to make ends meet. I knew that I had to make my own way. Depending on someone else wasn't something I was going to do. So I worked as a hostess, um, as a manager at restaurants, and every week when I got paid, I would wrap money in rubber bands. And I put that money under my mattress. When I decided to open Melba's and started counting how much money it was, it was a little over $300,000. Did you really have over $300,000 in your mattress? Really? I really had just a tad bit over $300,000 underneath my mattress. Ching ching. Yay. And that's the money that I used to open Melba's. You guys, what do you think of the food? Scale of 1 to 10? 
I opened up Melba's in Harlem because I'm born and raised in Harlem. We serve American comfort food, creamy tres mac and cheese, low country collard greens, candy yams, and my southern fried chicken that I season in a brown paper bag. Doing a happy day. I beat Bobby Flay with that southern fried chicken. It's real good. This chicken is good. It is, right? Look at that. Mm -hmm. And all this from the beginning has been a gold mine. The first year, my sales were just a little over 700000 Now, we've actually doubled that. We're up to $1.4 million in sales annually, which is a lot for a restaurant whose price point for entrees is from $10 to $19. Make mama some money. It's been a gold mine because when I signed my lease in 2004, it was dirt cheap. So it allows me to keep my prices down. And also, we packed on a regular basis. I want it all. I want the good life. I want the hard work. I want the rewards, the accolades. I want Melba's to be a brand. I want to be the Melba Stewart. The Melba Dean. This Mac is good. I know it's, it's wrong. You would say, what? lady, yeah, you got to take that off. That's what? not right. I know that. <laughs> off the success of Melba's, I opened Melba's Catering. And I also opened up Melba's 125, a cafeteria in the Harlem State Office building. My cafeteria was a hard lesson for me. I went into this thinking it was going to be easy and I was going to make a lot of money. Didn't happen. I invested close to 100000 into Melba's 125 and ended up losing five times that. It's not a restaurant. It's a cafeteria and run totally different. It was food costs, payroll expenses, bad accountants. It was a horrible bookkeeper, but most importantly, it was me. It was me not paying attention to the bottom line. So to just see all of that savings, especially from someone like me, who worked so hard to get what I have, to see that just wither away, it was heart-wrenching, and it still is. overcome the failure. I put Melba's 125 on a budget. I cut the payroll down. I started working on menus that were within our budget. And for the last two years, the cafeteria has been breaking even. It's been paying its own way. Because I want to mow business, mow business, exactly. and mow, mow business. business. Right. I got a lot going on, and now I'm taking on even more. That's smart. Hail to the now. That's not smart, but that's me. That's the entrepreneur in me. About a year ago, I started renting a space next door to Melba's, hoping to open my fourth business. Knowing what the real estate is in Harlem, it was too good of a deal for me to pass up. It's going to be a sweet shop called Sweet Melba's, or it may be something else. I'm not sure yet. I got to figure it out, though, because it's just costing me a load of money. Why is it taking so long? It's a fear of another failure. Tasted it already. Don't like the way it tastes. I'm actually challenging myself with the space next door, and it's a challenge that I want to win. I want to win it so badly, but at the end of the day, am I going to win or am I going to lose? Coming up... What about, you know, having a beautiful bar? That's a great idea. I'm spending several thousand dollars a month on rent next door, and I still don't know what to do with the space. I don't know why the customers aren't here in this restaurant. No, you got to come up with your rent. I do my end, I bring the person in here. <laughs> You guys have to learn to get along. And later. We walk into a restaurant today, and the food tastes like I absolutely disagree, man. We have the same goal for the meatball shop, which is to grow this business and be successful, but we don't agree on anything. The weather couldn't be any better, huh? I love the rain. I like the way it cleans the city. Today, we're on our way to meet with Van. Van is a banker, and what he does is he brokers deals. So he finds people that are looking to sell a piece or all of their company, and the people that want to buy a piece or all of the company, and he puts them together. Right now, the meatball shop is doing great, and this meeting can give us a better idea of what a large investment could do for us. So you've been speaking more to Van than I have. I mean, what, um, what do you think he's going to come to the table with? I just, I mean, they're very smart, you know, they're bankers, and this is what they do for a living, and they wouldn't be wasting their time if they didn't think they could make it work for us, you know? We want to keep growing the meatball shop, but we've always grown organically with internal money. If we took outside capital, we could grow really fast. The potential downfall is we lose control of the company. This would be great. Hopefully. Right now, we're contemplating two options for how we want to grow the meatball shop. Option one, we grow slowly with internal money. We make $1.8 million a year, which equals one to two restaurants a year. Over five years, we could open eight to 10 restaurants. Option two, we take outside money, we grow exponentially, and we could open 20 to 30 restaurants in five years. The difference between taking outside money and growing internally, it's massive. 
and taking outside money might not be the right route, but I'm willing to listen when someone wants to offer us millions of dollars. So what do we got, man? Let's, let's, uh, let's dive in. All right, we spent some time going through the information you provided, and based on what we've seen, I think it's worth between 40 and 50 million. When I hear million, like my balls creep into my stomach, when I hear a 40 to 50 in front of that million, I just, you know, life-changing. I raise a lot of capital for a lot of businesses, and I really think I can help you guys take this brand and build it into an empire. Look, you've got six units that are doing well. You've proven the model. I think you've got enough units that are performing well to leverage the brand to go across the U.S. I think if we find the right capital partner, we can take that to 40 units within five years. You know, growing a business from a you know, $40, $50 million business to a billion dollar business. Every major city ought to have 10 of these, at least. So if we're worth 40 to 50 million, how much do you think we can raise We've done our work and what we think the market will bear today based on what we've seen. I'm thinking in the neighborhood of $50 million. When I hear $50 million, I think that comes with some serious strings. No one gives you 50 million bucks and, and just says, hey, have fun. It's scary because it means uh, we're gonna have to perform. When Van starts throwing around big numbers, it makes me feel very suspicious. You trade equity for control of the company. And that's the major concern. It's scary to consider losing control of your business because you're tempted by this big, you know, financial reward. We talk about how amazing it's gonna be, how much money we can get, and how fast we'll be able to grow. What's it gonna cost us to get the money? I think ultimately, probably more discipline in your business, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but most entrepreneur-led businesses. What, what is, <laughs> more discipline? Uh, discipline, so, you know, processes, systems, you guys are starting to do that, but you're an entrepreneurial business. Over the last few years, you've been working to kind of more professionalize, systematize the business, but there will probably be more of that. Reporting will be more systematized. With our growth and, and with this plan, potential plan, I, I worry that the culture of our company could be at risk. One of the things you have to figure out how to do as you grow is maintain your culture and your consistency. And that's tough to do. And the meatball shop is, is a special place, and you want it to be special in every city you go to. But at the end of the day, you need to make a, a decision fast. The market is really good right now. I don't think it'll stay that way forever, and I think you need to make a decision quickly. It's a really slow Friday night. You know, and luckily we have uh, some of our good customers here. One of them is Joe. Hey, hi. How you doing? Same old, different same day. Old, same old, yes. Uh, what are you How you doing? doing? Same old stuff. We have to treat them like kings to make sure they keep coming back because they're one of the few things we could rely on nowadays. Spinach, pasta. All righty, beautiful. All right, here we go. Joe McCoola, chicken cardinal a la Joe. Chicken cardinal. Frigatari with Robin sausage and an eggplant rollatini dinner. Full order, right? It's full order. Get it done. Our customers love the food because I make it the same way my grandmother used to. We good? All right, I'm running with this. Watch out. Why aren't they here? I don't know. I, if I knew why, I would, I would have an answer. I don't have an answer. I, I really, truthfully, I don't know why the customers aren't here in this restaurant. Joe, you, always bro. a pleasure. Just a couple of years ago, business at the restaurant was stable. Not fantastic, but stable. The restaurant was averaging about 50 covers a day, with weekends being our busier days. The price per person here is usually about $33. So at 50 covers a day, at $33 a head, we're bringing in about 600 grand a year. But things have slowed down and people aren't coming in as much. Instead of 50 covers a day, we're getting about 40. That might not sound like a lot, but when you do the math, that means we're making 480 grand a year. That means we're down more than 100 grand. This restaurant supports a lot of families. Mine, my brothers, my mom, and all our employees. If things continue like this, we'll go out of business. So what do you think, guys? I think it's time to key it up. I think the night is pretty much done. Key it up. We run the risk of losing the legacy of, of my family, my great-grandparents, my grandparents, my parents, and it's not good. All right, listen, I think it's time to key it up. What time is it? Key it up. Key it up. What time is it? 9.30. 9.30. 20 to, 20 to 10, 9.30, 20 to 10. We're up until 11 o'clock on Friday nights. That's what time we're up until 11 o'clock, we got nothing going on, man. Oh, I'm thinking of a reason why we got nothing going on here. I do my job, I come, I, I, I get the food, I prepare yeah. it, I cook it. Your job is to get the customers in the place, the marketing, and what do we got in the dining room? Wait, let me go look. 
empty dining room. That's probably why the reason why you want to keep it up now. What are you gonna do? There was some people here before. I well, think you gotta start doing a better job, personally. Well, the thing is, if you actually decided to maybe cook the food in a, in a timely fashion once in a while, no, no. We, and maybe, we do cook the food no, in a timely fashion. The food in no, 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 no. I bring the people in. I, you don't bring the people in, obviously. Look at the goddamn dining room. Yeah, it's not my fault. You don't follow through on your end. I'm standing over here for 20 minutes waiting for Joe's table. No, no, Joe's that ain't it. No, okay? no, no. Oh, how about how about this? You go home now, and everybody else can stay here. You leave. That it hurts me? That no, I gotta well, leave? You, you wanna go home, key it up, key it up, key it up. No, you know what? Listen, it's 9.30 at listen, night. Listen, you gotta... Close at 11. No, you gotta come up with your end. I do my end, I bring the person in here. Oh, here we go again. I don't wanna hear this no more. I'm tired here of here it. Here we go. Just go, go to outside. Here. You might have to go home. Break another one. Go home. Break another one. Break another one. Break another one. Go outside. Yeah, I'm tired of it. Yeah, break some more. Go home. Yeah, go home. Yeah, I, I, I have your fun. Yeah, break the whole friggin' place. You wanna leave, go home now. Do what you gotta do. Don't come back, matter of fact. Oh. Mm. Want me to? No, yeah. Me okay, I hope, I hope you stop. <laughs> you think it's my exercise? <laughs> About a year ago, I started renting this space next door to Melba's. Pretty much the size of the other space without the kitchen. How much does it cost? I wish you didn't ask me that. You know. You know to the penny. Uh, it's cost me a little over a hundred thousand. Really? That's a lot of money. Sorry, my guys have been using it as a storage space, but okay. I called my architect, Jermaine, and my financial consultant, Michael, so that we can come up with a plan. I was just going to ask you, both of you, your personal opinions on um, the sweet shop. You could. What about, you know, having a beautiful bar against this wall, people seeing everything from the street side, and then a full, larger restaurant on the other side. Just if we, we think of this wall, conceptually, I see the patch through there, right. and a possible patch through here for service-wise. You make more money from that bar totally. than, than you will ever else. make cooking and or baking. That's a great idea. So what are we talking about in terms of numbers? It would cost about 310000 Something like that. The steel is what costs a lot of money. The steel? Yes. Because okay. they got to move the electric, they got to put the steel in, so you got to have a, quite a few inspections. The idea of taking next door and making it into a lounge, which connects to my existing restaurant, is a great one. But when I hear breaking down walls, these are things that a sweet shop wouldn't necessarily require. So ultimately, it's going to come down to which one am I going to make the most money from. How many seats do you think we can get from this space? I would say minimum 14 seats. Minimum. Shucks. I would love that. And then 18 bar stools next door. You know, Dude. Double jab now. When you're looking at the profit margin for liquor, it's about 300%. It's a win-win-win situation all day long. If you think you could put the time into closing this down for me about, let's say, four to five weeks minimum. Closing down to four to five weeks, do you know how much that would cost me? Melba says about $1.4 million in sales a year, and around 390000 of that is profit. The space next door is eating into that profit big time. Rent alone is nine grand a month. That's already $108,000. Shutting down for four to five weeks is another cost of the build-out. Melba's makes about $26,000 a week in sales. If I shut down for five weeks, I'm losing out on $130,000 in sales. It's just a really big decision. I have a lot to think about. What's the next plan for us? I'll figure out you know, how much the project costs, and when we're done with construction, you'll have the hottest spot in town. That was a crazy meeting. I think the pros and cons are there in front of us, but I need time to think about it. I, I think that it's necessary to make the deal. It's a risk. And then on top of it, to get your balls busted by some suit because he signed a big check for you. I didn't work in Midtown for a reason. Growing our business slowly and methodically might not be as sexy as raising millions of dollars, but it keeps us in the driver's seat and in control, and that's what's important. What's the alternative? The alternative is you go a little slower. It's not like gambling everything every single time. Yeah, I mean, I know it's a risk. I, I know you're scared. I mean, of course, we're all scared. But personally, I think we should do it. We've been setting ourselves up to do something like this. We're not in a position to just open 10 restaurants right now. We're struggling with quality and the consistency of the food. We're struggling with the quality and the consistency of the service. We're struggling with the talent and buy-in of the managers. Consistency means that we have a consistent feel at the meatball shop. That when you walk in, the service and the food is the service and the food you would get at any other meatball shop. My number one fear and the only thing that holds me back from this is 
if we're not properly able to run six restaurants, I don't think we can go through with this deal. We certainly can't open 30 more restaurants if we're having problems running six. So we can't go through with this if we can't get that under control. You know as well as I know that this is a hot brand. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So either we gotta get off the pot, man. I make $120,000 a year on the books now. I work my ass off. I'm also married with a mortgage, planning on building a family. So I need more money. If we make this deal, Daniel and I will each be able to take seven figures off the table. It's huge. So you'll be a millionaire? I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> I, you know, kind of wild, actually. Whether we choose to do it or not, you're the one that has to be confident about this decision. If we're gonna make a deal with an investment broker, we have to make sure that our restaurants are consistent. The best way for that to happen is for Michael and I to go to the restaurants and make sure it's happening. I know we have to open more restaurants, and, and on one hand, it's better for me if we open them. It's not good for anybody if we open them and, and they fail, or if we're hasty. No risk, no reward, dude. Coming up. Is it dry erase or no? No, it's a permanent marker. As soon as we walk into the restaurant, we realize that there's something wrong. Well, these are dirty, these are This is not gonna make us millions of dollars. So I'm excited to hear what you guys came up with. It's gonna be double what we talked about. That's a whole lot more. They're like truly trying that debate. After meeting with Van and hearing how important our consistency is to the deal, we need to go into the restaurants, check the consistency, and make sure that we're ready to expand before we make fools of ourselves in the open market. When we go into a restaurant, we're looking for consistency in service, food, and decor. The decor and the vibe needs to feel consistent. So you walk into a meatball shop, you know where you're at. You should feel like you're being treated kindly, and that all the recipes are the same throughout the whole entire concept. So if I get a meatball on the Lower East Side, I'm getting the same meatball on Chelsea. And it's coming out of the kitchen roughly at the same time. So in our consistency checks, we're going to be looking at those three things. Coming down the line. Are you actually doing the line checks every day? Yep. Everybody's doing it? Yeah. yeah. OK, great. Everything is looking great at the Lower East Side. The service and the decor is exactly what we're looking for. A roast veg, braised greens, market salad, all the specials. Thanks. And the last thing we need is to just taste the food. This is unbelievably delicious. I love this. Want to do the next stop? Yeah, let's get out of here. They definitely got pizza up in there. What's going on, guys? What's going on? You working in the kitchen? John's not here, so I'm working a shift right now. What do you mean? No one's managing the front of the house? No. What's going on, guys? How are you? You guys gonna be three? Uh, You're four. Uh, give me one sec. As soon as we walk into the restaurant, we realize that there's something wrong. The manager's stuck in the kitchen because apparently one of our cooks didn't show up. We were thinking about opening late, but I'd rather, you know, I'd, of course I'd rather, rather open late. Yeah. All right, let me help you out. Two whole wheats coming after that, one pork, one veg. All right, I got a market salad. Nothing has a label on it, which is making me nervous. Is everything going well? Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. All right. When I walked into the restaurant, I was a bit concerned. But looking around, the place is spotless, the customers are happy, the decor and service look great. I don't think we have a problem here in this restaurant. How is everything on the line? We're struggling a little bit to keep uh, the dressing. It needs help. I don't think they, these guys are following the recipe when they're making this dressing because it's very bland. We need to make sure they're following the recipes when they're making the food. I mean, it tastes delicious for me. I think you need to literally follow the recipe. Learn from the recipe. Got it. I appreciate Daniel's concern about the recipes, but quite frankly, I think everything tastes great. It's not a surprise that we disagree because we have a hard time agreeing on anything. Daniel and I can see a blue wall, and I, Daniel can say, that wall is blue, and I can say, that wall is green. Let's head over to the next shop and say what's up to those guys. Let's do it. Our Williamsburg store does the most volume, so it's super important for us that that store is on point at all times because it definitely reaches the most people. Is it is it dry erase or no? No, it's permanent marker. How you guys doing over here? Very very good. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, we no appreciate problem. it. Absolutely. Are these clean, dude? These are dirty. These are. They're just so. No. Really? Kidding me? Do you have the recipe for this? The recipe books? No, no we don't have the books. You know where the? Do you know where? Do we know where we have them or no? Daniel, 
Yeah. The bathrooms get trashed, dude. It's ridiculous. The cooks are not following the recipe. There's graffiti. The decor in the bathroom is ripped off the wall. This is not going to make us millions of dollars. You know, that there's no salt on the risotto. It's completely overcooked. Those meatballs are a lot less flavorful compared to the rest of the meatballs. This is kind of boring to me. I ate that salad at Chelsea, and it was one of the most delicious salads I've had. Is, 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 is this a Nothing representation? Close. It's just... Not right. It's really frustrating. If we can't run six restaurants well, then we certainly aren't in a position to open 25, 30 more. We have a lot to consider before taking money from investors. Coming up... My friend said the other day, they said, just we're arguing in the kitchen. Maybe that's the reason why business is slow. Everything's never going to change. No, it's never going to change. But it's, it's just it's, the way it's it is. The same, it's the same thing all the time. He's got the, he's he's got the same... In the kitchen, oh, wait, wait, you're busy. Always, These guys the... have to learn to get along. I think now is the time to make a deal with Van. It's the highest the market's ever been in history. It is the true strike while the iron's hot thing. I disagree. So I'm excited to hear what you guys came up with in terms of numbers, because that's going to be a huge deciding factor for me. That dictates the whole game plan, you know? Right. I'm meeting with Jermaine and Michael to go over plans they came up with for how I can best utilize the space next door. We'll take a look. Let's take a look. All right. Let's see. My primary focus with their design is going to be how much it's going to cost and how much I can make from it. The bar is now a focal point in the design. Okay. You gain approximately 100 square feet wow. in seating alone. So we're talking about 20, 20 more seats here. 20 more seats here. And let's go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20 more seats there. Wow. That's 40 seats. Correct. Wow. That's huge. Now here's the hard question. How much is it going to cost me? Uh, Mike's the number guy. I'm the uh, design guy. So you want to get into numbers with Bubba? <laughs> yeah, so um, the good news is it's not over a million. I'm trying to break the ice, but it, it's yeah. going to be 660. Do that then on plan, which is you know, double what we talked about. Did you say 660? I said 660, yes. Mm. That's a huge number. It's an astronomical number. I love the idea, but $660,000? That's a whole lot more than what we talked about before. I'm trying not to faint right now. Right. Seriously, I'm like, truly trying not to faint. Okay. The original estimate didn't factor in design, furnishings, or contingency for unforeseen costs. The new number is overwhelming, but I have to remind myself that I'm going to double my seating capacity. This could take me from 1.4 million in sales to about 3.2. This is a big deal for me. It's a huge decision. That's a lot of money. That's going to be a great, sexy bar. So that you don't have no worries about. Is it cold? Listen, I know how you like it. Mm. Good? Good. Good. My mom is the boss. She's the ultimate say in everything. Either you respect it or you get the wooden spoon across the back of the head. So what have you been up to? What I've been up to? Same old stuff. I hear uh, things uh, are going on in the kitchen. Where's your brother? What's going on in the kitchen? I hear from my friends. They come here. They tell me. You send your friends in here to watch me like we're 10 years old? Yeah, that's right. I always <laughs> did. Why would I stop now? When was this? I'm going to tell you the exact date. I want to know. I no, mean, got, it doesn't know. matter the date. It's what I know. They said you was arguing in the kitchen. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember us doing any of that stuff. You don't remember. I don't know when this happened. Because it always happens. That's why. What are you going to do? Anthony! 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 Are you deaf? Hey. Yeah. Ma wants to talk to us. Oh. I think we're in trouble. What is it? Meaning of the minds? Yeah. I had my friends here the other day. They said you were arguing in the kitchen, and they hear you. Not me. So that means other people can hear you in there. That wasn't me. I wasn't arguing with nobody. Maybe that's the reason why business is slow. People hear you in the kitchen arguing. Maybe they don't like it. They don't want to hear it. They're here to enjoy themselves. Just, this is the way it is. Everything's never going to change. No, it's just never going to you know, change. It's just it's, the way it's it is. It's the same, it's the same thing all the time. He's got the, he's got the same... In the kitchen, oh, wait, wait, you're busy. Always, I got that's the kitchen, the it it's you know, busy. The other guy's we cooking, can't do we're this. trying to get we the food out as fast as we can. It's oh, a problem. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You're like children. That's why I treat you like children. Because you just got to get together, work together, bring in more business. I want to see my grandchildren working here. The business is down this year. This is really bad. Yeah. 
If it goes down next year like this year, we're in trouble. What do we have to do? What are we gonna do? I make suggestions all the time and I get the same answer from him. No, we can't do that. No, I'm not gonna do that. No, I don't want it. No, I don't want it. Like, like, like the 10 year old he is. It was a stupid suggestion. That's why I don't like it. Stupid suggestion. To bring some business in and make money is a stupid suggestion. You guys have to learn to get along. Anthony, you have to change and be open to some of Ralph's ideas. Please. You have to. I'll think about it. The simple yes. Yes. When I come into this place, I'm that little kid again. I'm eight years old, I'm not 48 no more. And uh, I wanted to get back to that. I, I, I do for my children. This is what I'm all hoping for. If I could ever get back to that, I, I think I've done my job and I can pass it on. And we have to work together as a family, because this is not good. Uh, okay. We'll work out it as hard as we can now. Okay. We'll see. Haven't consumed enough? Visit the show online at cnbcprime.com slash consumed. I don't think that we're ever going to walk into our restaurants and not find a problem. I don't think that it's ever going to be perfect. But we do over $3 million at every single one of our restaurants. It's successful. It works. So I think now is the time to make a deal with Van. We have a business that people want to see grow. It's the highest the market's ever been in history. Um, people are paying 15 to 20 times multiple for our category of restaurant. It is the true strike while the iron's hot thing. We walk into a restaurant today and the food tastes like The food the sucks. The food sucks. Yeah. The service sucks. Bathrooms Bathroom. look like When you walk into a restaurant and you're like, these guys have their together, it's running well and it's smooth and everything I expected happened, yeah, we're ready. If we want to go faster, we can. But let's not go faster if we're going to trip on our first step out of the gate and have to reset. I absolutely disagree, man. There's no, that, that it just doesn't make sense. I disagree. We have the same goal for the meatball shop, which is to grow this business and be successful. We don't agree on anything. There's zero that we agree on. Very, very rarely have Daniel and I sat in a room and said, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Never. Doesn't happen. What we have is something very special. It's very, very special. And, and, and taking, there's, 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 taking the, just listen to me. We built out this incredibly strong market in New York where we know our revenues are gonna be high and we know that our EBITDA is gonna be great. The way I see it growing is we take it to another top tier market in Los Angeles. You're blasting the meatball shop again like it's a brand new concept, like it's the best thing that's ever happened. Just like we started in New York City, you're on every single late night show again. You're, you're, you, you got an option for a new cookbook because it's the best thing ever. New York guys, move to LA. If we do that right now, we, we crash the ship. Is that true? I have a plan. That what I'm is happy. the plan? We own this business, right? We own this business. We're two young guys and everybody wants a piece of it. Right. So they're vultures. They're trying to take it from us. If we're moving too quickly, if our consistency is not up to par, you know what we are? We're weak. So you know what we do? We slow down and we make sure we don't put ourselves in a position where we're weak. It sounds like a pretty plan to me. We have six successful restaurants. There's no reason that we need to open 30 more right now and potentially risk everything. The last thing I want to do is have my pants around my goddamn ankles and all of the vultures out there saying we'd love a piece of the meatball shop and all of a sudden we're in a jam and they can make more money out of it and they want you the gone. Mm -hmm. They want to come in and they want to eat your lunch. CNBC is Shark Tank Nation. Well, we haven't made real profit yet. Well, that's your fault. Shark Tank, coming up next. Join the Shark Tank Nation. Honey, sweetie, poopsie, baby. Are you out of your mind? CNBC. Marcus Lemonis is the prophet. All new Tuesdays at 10. CNBC. <laughs>